Hi everyone, Dan here from Rosie and Maple Syrup. Today we're going to do an overview of reverse osmosis membranes and how they can be used in the maple syrup industry. First, I'd like to thank Membrane Solutions for sponsoring this video and for providing this membrane and housing set. For those who are interested in building a reverse osmosis system, commonly referred to as an RO system for their hobby or small scale maple syrup operations, there are links provided below in the description of this video and the comments section for purchasing discounted membranes and housings from the video sponsor, Membrane Solutions, by using the promo codes listed below and that are also provided at the end of this video. I personally have used Membrane Solutions membranes in at least three different RO units that I've built, each progressing in the number of membranes used and the complexity of the design. I've been incredibly pleased with the quality and performance of these membranes, with my first membrane still performing well after three full seasons of use and thousands of gallons of sap processed through it. First, let's start with some basics. What is reverse osmosis and how does it work? Reverse osmosis is a process by which pure water, called permeate, is created through filtration at the molecular level through semi-permeable membranes, exactly like this membrane from Membrane Solutions. This process is facilitated by an applied pressure, normally from a booster pump or a high pressure feed pump. This removes the unwanted ions, particles, dissolved solids such as sugars and other molecules and even bacteria from the water output, which again is called permeate. The quote waste output of this process is called concentrate. And this is full of all the items removed from the feed water. In maple syrup applications, the concentrate is what we are going to keep and boil to turn into maple syrup. Okay, so let's take a look at this membrane and this housing provided by Membrane Solutions to understand how that process works a little bit more specifically. When you purchase these as a set, you will get the, the housing, the element, the wrench, the fittings, and an instruction sheet. Um, it's important to keep this membrane dry and clean before you're going to use it. And once you do start using it and it is wetted, it has to remain um, wet the entire time. And I've got a lot of other videos in regard to initial use and flushing these membranes, um, flushing them after every single uh, time you process sap, as well as how do you do an end of season cleaning. There'll be links to those videos. You can go and look at those at a different time. Okay, so, um, when you are ready, you'd unwrap this guy and uh, you're going to insert it right down into the top of this membrane housing. Okay, and those O-rings on the bottom here are going to insert right down into that little port at the bottom of the housing. Okay, you're going to make sure this goes all the way in. This is a nice seal on the inside here that you're going to want to make sure isn't wrinkled or anything. Um, there's a silicone seal on here. Make sure that that is in place and not crimped or anything. And then you're going to tighten that all the way down tight, okay, with the membrane inside here. And then the high pressure pump is going to provide input flow to the top of the membrane housing right over here. Okay, and then the outputs are down here. Okay, and these, these outputs... Um, one of them is for permeate and one is for concentrate. The middle one is going to be where your pure water permeate comes out. This offset elevated one is where your concentrate is going to come out. Okay, so whether you're using only one housing or if you're using multiple and you're going to connect those either in series or parallel, you want to make sure you, you remember um, permeate, the pure water, that's what we... We'll save for other purposes, but the concentrate is what we're going to use to boil. That's where the extra concentrated sap is now uh, coming out of. All right, so what are some of the benefits of reverse osmosis for the maple syrup producer? Number one, processing sap through an RO leads to a lot less water to boil out of the sap. In other words, since you're starting with a higher sugar concentration on a volumetric basis, you're going to have a lot less boiling time and fuel consumption to yield your final product. I've used this specific style membrane solutions membrane in multiple RO hobby systems, and I've been able to effectively reduce my fuel consumption and boiling time by at least one half, and in some cases on my most advanced unit, up to one fifth of what it would have taken without using the RO. So if you use wood, you're gonna gain back all that time 
cutting, splitting, stacking the wood and the storage space for it. If you use natural gas or propane or fuel oil, you're gonna be cutting those costs significantly. Another benefit of using a reverse osmosis system is that you're getting pure water out of the process. That water can be used in other things around the sugar house, such as cleaning your equipment, your pans, your, your tanks, you can use it to flush your RO system to maintain optimum effectiveness at the end of every single time you process sap. Many syrup producers don't have access to running water for their sugar houses. So using an RO can help produce that supply of water without having to run additional pipes or transporting it via other means. Are there any drawbacks to using an RO? In general, no, as long as you boil the concentrate soon after it's processed. In general, it's a good rule of thumb to treat sap, especially concentrated sap, like you would milk. If you leave it out in warmer temperatures for too long, the composition of it will change due to microbial activity and it will eventually spoil. The concentrate contains a higher concentration of sugar and bacteria, so you'll want to boil it as soon as possible to reduce any chance of accelerated microbial action on that sugar in the sap which will ultimately change the final color and flavor grade classification of your syrup. In general, prolonged microbial activity in the sap or concentrated sap will yield darker syrup. All right, let's go over some of the features and key characteristics of this membrane that you'll wanna have a general working understanding of when designing and building your hobby system. First of all, membranes are given a size and rating. This is, size here, 3012, you want to match against your housing side. This indicates that this is an ultra low pressure element, so it can operate down uh, pretty low, around 100 PSI, instead of some of the larger units, which require two, 300 PSI. This 400 is for 400 gallons per day. Now that gallons per day rating is for your permeate output. So in ideal conditions, this membrane can produce 400 gallons per day of permeate, pure water, okay? Now, there's some caveats that go with that. That rating is established by using a specific pressure, fluid temperature, and recovery rate with a specific testing solution by the manufacturer. Practically speaking, in maple sap operations where our temperature is going to be about 35 to 40 degrees for that fluid versus 77 degrees, which are the testing conditions for this rating, um, you're gonna see approximately 25% of this rating. So 400 gallons per day, 25% of that, you're gonna get about 100 gallons per day of permeate coming out. And that's gonna translate to about four to five gallons per hour. And again, that will vary based upon the temperature of the fluid, the overall condition of the membrane, making sure you did not have uh, fouling of the membrane, which we will talk about, um, as well as uh, did you properly care for it and flush it in between uses, okay? Uh, as well as your starting sugar concentration. The higher the sugar concentration in, the lower the permeate coming out will be it just makes the membrane work that much harder. There's that much less water to take out of the solution. Okay. So um, starting at about 2%, going to 4%, you're going to, again, see about a 25% uh, efficiency of this rating. So take that number that you see 400 gallon per day, divide it uh, by four. And then if you want to see that on an hourly basis, you're just going to divide that by 24. Okay, so I mentioned the, the pressure rating. These are rated uh, for about 100 PSI. They can go above that. My recommendation would be to operate them at approximately 100 PSI. And, and that's a good thing because many of the diaphragm pumps that are available to, to be used as the, the pressure feed pump um, do have good flow rates at about 100 PSI. And there's two in particular that I would recommend. One would be an Aquatech 8852 and the other would be a Corin Water TYP 8900. Um, both of those are uh, very nice diaphragm pumps, reasonably priced. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is the recovery rate. The recovery rate is the percentage of permeate compared to the feed flow that is coming out. These are tested and rated at a recovery rate of 15%. 
So for example, every 100 gallons per hour or per minute, however the pump is rated, uh, let's go with, with um, 100 gallons per hour, 15 gallons per hour would be able to come out as permeate. Now, again, uh, knowing you can, you can actually get, um, get that number in ideal conditions for SAP, you won't. Um, but the key to keeping your recovery rate low, which is good for the membrane, is keeping your feed flow high. And that's because you're getting additional fluid coming through, making sure you don't get the sugar and other uh, molecules clogging up the membrane. That, that higher speed velocity across the membrane, that extra turbulence can help keep that from fouling up and getting clogged up. Okay, we already mentioned um, the need for a high pressure feed pump. Pumps are selected based upon using a pump curve, which compares two operating parameters such as pressure and flow rate. For our use here, we're going to want to pick a pump that's capable of providing the desired flow rate at our target operating pressure, which is, again, remember, 100 PSI for these style membranes. Both pumps that I mentioned are capable of um, achieving the appropriate flow rates to have good recovery rates using these membranes at 100 PSI. Uh, for example, if you were going to do a single membrane setup and you want to keep your recovery rate at 20%, you're going to need a flow input of 20 gallons per hour at 100 PSI. And then using a 400 gallon per day membrane, you're going to get about four to five gallons of permeate out and 15, 16 gallons of concentrate out per hour. And that's going to keep you in that ballpark of about 20% for recovery rate, which is pretty good. It's pretty close to the 15% that these are um, tested at. Okay, going back to the overall system design, once you've got the membrane in and the pump selected, you're also going to need a needle valve coming off the concentrate line. That needle valve, you're gonna turn down to restrict the flow to be able to produce the pressure inside this vessel and throughout the whole system that's necessary to push that pure water through the membrane and out or permeate out, okay, and reject our concentrate. So you, you pressurize the concentrate side using the needle valve. Okay, lastly, you can use multiple membranes in different configuration settings to achieve your desired outputs. You can put these together in series, which you would then take this concentrate output of your first membrane and feed it into the input of the next membrane in series, okay? Uh, that would be a series setup. You can do parallel setups where you are splitting from your pump flow and, and doing input to two different membranes at once. And then from there, you can combine, you know, the concentrate output of both of those into a third membrane if you want. That's a hybrid or a multi-stage setup. Uh, there's a lot of different options to achieve your desired outputs. There's pros and cons associated with both and some additional complexity with any of the parallel or hybrid setups. My recommendation would be to operate these in series. The number one reason for that is you're able to ensure the lowest possible recovery rate for all of the membranes in the system in a series setup, and it's also much easier to flush the system. One other thing that you can do to increase the amount of concentration is to introduce a concept called recirculation. Recirculation is going to take a portion of the concentrated sap and recirculate it right back through your pump and right back through your membrane, mixing with additional input feed flow. And that will um, asymptotically taper off to a specific sugar value that you'll be able to get or concentration value in your sap that you'll be able to get. Recirculation is really controlled by having a second needle valve on that recirc loop where you can throttle the amount that's coming back in and being reconcentrated again. Okay, so in scenarios like that, instead of just doubling your output going from 2% sugar to maybe 4%, you might be able to creep that up to 6% on a single pass because you've got that recirculation loop in there. Okay, that was a really fast crash course on reverse osmosis. As I mentioned, I've got a lot of other blog posts and videos on this topic if you're interested, but at a high level, you're gonna to wanna to consider the following factors when selecting and sizing all of your components in your system, as well as all the principles that we just talked about in this video. Number one, how many gallons of sap do you plan on processing each day? Okay, sap can run from about half a gallon to one gallon 
per tap per day, depending upon a lot of different factors um, and whether you're on buckets or tubing or vacuum tubing. Number two, what is your boiling and evaporation rate? And are you going to try to keep pace with that? In other words, how do you plan to operate? Are you going to process your sap first and then boil it? Or are you going to try to get a head start and continue to process while boiling or just run both in parallel? Understanding your operating model and the amount of sap that you need to process as well as your evaporation rate are key for sizing your RO components. All right. So if you're interested in building your own system, be sure to use the discount codes and links provided below to purchase the membranes and housings from Membrane Solutions. You'll be able to get a 10% discount using those. Additionally, as I mentioned before, I've got a lot of other video and blog post resources on this topic that are available for you. Whether you want to set up a simple single membrane setup, a multi-stage setup, or up to a five membrane series setup with recirculation, I do have information on all of those on my channel. Uh, thanks again to Membrane Solutions for sponsoring this video and for providing these discounted membranes to all of our viewers. And thank you for stopping by. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more additional uh, topics in the future. Thank you.